Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video, and this is another Wendover Productions reaction. And the last one I did was Cities that See How Aircraft Carriers Work, and this is a similar one, but this one is on um, submarines. The video is Living Underwater How Submarines Work, and honestly, I don't know which one I was more clueless going into like submarines or aircraft carriers because they're both things that I'm so sort of unaware of, and I'm, not, I'm uneducated on, I guess you could say. and yeah, I enjoyed the last one and I found it really interesting. I'm definitely down to do more of the aircraft, like with more videos involving aircraft carriers, if there is any more out there, of course. But this one's on submarines. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Again, I don't know really anything about them. I've been seeing them sort of mentioned in sort of a lot of the military type videos I've been doing recently. But in terms of like being my knowledge on the actual, on actually uh, actual submarines, I don't know much at all, if not anything, but... I really enjoyed this channel actually. He is one of my favourite sort of channels I've been reacting to recently, so I'm definitely down to do more of his videos. So yeah, if you want to me to react to more of this this guy's channel, just suggest some certain videos I could do in future and I'll be down to do so. But let's just get into this man. Quick shout out to my Instagram, links in the description, it's the same as my Twitter. If you want to interact with me, that's the best place because I'm able to talk to some of you guys. I can't reply to everyone, but I do try and message people when I can. And it's fun. It's, it's it's really fun just messaging people who watch these videos. It's just, it blows my mind, but it's it's really like fun for me. And also, link to my second channel. We're so close to 10k on that, so I'd appreciate if you help get us there. But yeah, let's just get into this one, man. Let's see what what this video is and how submarines work, as the title says. This video was made possible by Brilliant. Learn something new every day with money, yeah? for 20% off you know how and being one of the first 200 to sign up Love at brilliantstorg slash Wendover. In all of World War II, the world used about five megatons of explosives. Now, this is a Trident II missile, capable of carrying 12 nuclear warheads together equivalent in power to about five megatons of explosives. <laughs> Bro, see, that's... Technology is dumb. Technology is fucked. That is just mad. That is absolutely mad. A single American Ohio-class submarine can carry 24 Trident II missiles. I'm already fucking blown away, man. <laughs> how? <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> I can't imagine how big they are. We're going to see, but, mate, that is disgracefully crazy, man. That's ridiculous. Already my mind is blown and we're not even 30 seconds in. <laughs> fucking a hell. single submarine can carry a devastating, catastrophic, inconceivable I mean, huge... amount of firepower. While in reality, due to arms reduction treaties and practicality, these boats often carry far less than their maximum armament, submarines can still creep up oh, wow. anywhere, undetected, ready to unleash their firepower, more powerful than the entire arsenal of some countries, in an instant. Submarines are different in purpose to some other elements of a navy. They're while an so aircraft strange. carrier, for example, is intended to be big, foreboding, and noticeable as a means to display a nation's power to the world, submarines are meant to be unseen, undetected, an invisible silent force that could or could not be anywhere at any given time. In a way, submarines almost serve a purpose of psychological warfare. An enemy can never know for sure whether a submarine is looming off its shore. While dozens of countries operate submarines, the most powerful and often largest of these boats are those capable of firing ballistic missiles carrying- They can shoot in- I didn't know they could shoot in the air. I thought they could only shoot in the water. Oh, mate. <laughs> Technology is moving crazy. I can't imagine what submarines are going to be doing in 20 years' time. But they're probably going to fly. <laughs> know how technology is going. Submarines are soon going to be able to fly, which is just... Oh, my, God, my head is Nuclear gone already. Warheads. Only six what nations are confirmed to have these submarines. The US, UK, France, hey, India, let's go. Russia, and China. In addition, analysts have found evidence suggesting that North gang, Korea gang. and Israel also <laughs> each have nuclear missile-capable submarines. Nowadays, there are essentially two good different thing, types it? of military submarines with two different missions. The attack submarine, the more common kind, is generally smaller and, in combat, attacks other close-range targets like ships using torpedoes, shorter-range missiles, and other armaments. The other, often larger type of submarine are those ballistic missile oh submarines, which essentially Look serve the purpose size. of being a mobile, hidden launch platform for nuclear missiles. The idea is that, as a stealth launch platform, a country's submarines would survive any nuclear first strike and therefore be able to retaliate against an aggressor. Ballistic missile submarines are therefore critical to the idea of mutually assured destruction. If anyone attacked with nuclear weapons, assuming those attacked had nuclear weapons that would survive a strike and they retaliated, both the attacker and those attacked would be destroyed. 
Therefore, many consider these nuclear missile equipped submarines to actually be a form of nuclear deterrence. They say they reduce the likelihood of others using nukes since they assure their subsequent destruction. Considering that these submarines might survive when a country and government do not, they therefore need the independent authority to use their missiles. While other operators likely have similar setups, it's known that the UK's four ballistic missile submarines each have a letter locked in a safe instructing their commander on what to do if the UK is wiped out by a nuclear strike. Oh, These whoa. letters are written by each Prime Minister what? at the beginning of their term and destroyed, unread, at the end. Each PM <laughs> essentially has to choose which of the four potential options they want to instruct their sub commanders to do. Nothing to place themselves under the command of an ally like the US or Australia, for the commander to use their judgment, or to retaliate and launch nuclear missiles at the attacker. Of course, what, what gives submarines their stealth is That's the blanket of water. American Ohio class submarines are publicly known to be able to go down as deep as 800 feet or 250 meters. In reality, it is believed they can go much further. <laughs> as soon as they subsurfaces, though, their stealth is lost, especially in today's era of satellite tracking. Therefore, it is important that submarines can stay underwater for long periods so that they can dive underwater on one side of the world and make their way to the other undetected. What? Of course, almost all of the world's ballistic missile equipped submarines are nuclear powered, meaning they have virtually unlimited range. These boats' reactor cores only need to be swapped every few decades. In addition, most submarines have oxygen generators and desalinators, so, like nuclear powered aircraft carriers, the only thing that really limits how long they can stay deployed is their food supply. How it works on American nuclear subs, which work similarly to those of other countries, is that each boat has two fully staffed crews at any given time, the blue and gold crews. The blue crew will first man the boat while on patrol, which lasts, on average, 77 days. The different submarines' different patrols are scheduled so that there are always submarines deployed. Despite this long patrol period, in the US Navy at least, submarines are actually known to have the best food of any vessel. Some say it's because submarines are small. The chef has nowhere to hide if a meal is bad. It more <laughs> likely has to do with the fact that submarines get a higher food budget than other vessels. Food is important to morale, especially considering submarine duty is one of the Navy's toughest jobs. Of course, fresh food can only last, at most, two weeks, so the meal quality deteriorates as the weeks go by. Eventually, the only ingredients left are canned, dried, or frozen. The sign of food quality deteriorating does mean that the end of patrol is coming, at which time the first crew, the blue crew, would take the boat back to either its home port or an allied overseas port. The gold crew will then arrive, and then both crews will work to complete a turnover, restocking, oh, and maintenance wow. period of 25 days. Then, the blue crew will fly home for vacation and subsequent training before the cycle repeats again. Most crew members will keep the cycle going for years on end. Submariners even live their days in cycles as well. They work 8 hours on, then have 16 off to train, conduct maintenance, work out, eat, and sleep. Now, to get a sense of the scale of the largest of these submarines, here's a Boeing 747-400, and here's an American Ohio-class submarine. It is almost 2.5 times longer, with a hull circumference <laughs> far larger than the plane's first oh, watch. Uh, but even oh. <laughs> this is not the world's largest submarine. That title goes to the slightly longer and far wider Russian Typhoon-class submarine. These are so large that their amenities include a sauna and small pool. On American- A sauna? <laughs> They've got a sauna and a swimming pool. They've got a swimming pool in the sea. Like, and most what? other submarines, the amenities are more <laughs> lacking though. It's important that submariners have things to do in their downtime, considering they'll spend three months without sunlight in a metal That's tube, mad. but there just isn't much space. The mess is really the only open space not devoted to work. Submarines tend to have gym equipment, but it's not usually consolidated in one room. More often, it's just spread out in different nooks and crannies. On large Ohio-class submarines, a submariner's tiny bunk is their only true personal space. On smaller what submarines, the like the American Virginia class, the number of man. sailors exceeds the number of bunks, so the most junior sailors have to share bunks. While one works, the other sleeps, and vice versa, oh, and there's shit. no true personal space. Compared to many surface names, that makes you respect them, man. I could not, I could not do that. I could not do that. What is the pay for these types of people, like people who work on submarines? Because, like, I don't really know, but I assume it's very good pay because that seems like a really like sort of. I just couldn't do that. Like, I need my personal space sometimes, as do a lot of people. So I respect it even more, man. I didn't realize it was that sort of. Just that, like that hard I guess you I mean obviously I knew it was going to be a hard job to do but 
to this kind of level, I would have never guessed Navy ships, at all. which have phones, frequent mail deliveries, and even internet, communication to the outside world is limited on submarines. Each submariner is given an email address that their family can send messages to. When the submarine is able to receive communications, all these messages are then sent electronically. On board, the messages are all reviewed by a dedicated crew member. They check through to be sure that no information is being sent that they don't want known by the sailor. For example, they might choose to not pass on information of a family death in order to not affect crew morale. There's Jeez. no way to get sailors off anyways, so many believe it's better to leave that news for the end of the patrol. How submarines communicate, though, is complicated because they do, of course, spend months underwater. Almost all radio waves can't travel through salt water, but submarines do need communications to receive orders. Very low frequency radio waves, though, do penetrate water to an extent. That's why VLF radio forms the core of submarine communication systems. Different navies have large VLF transmitters. For example, the US has ones in Maine, Washington, Hawaii, and elsewhere, India has one on its southern coast, and Australia has one in Western Australia. These VLF signals are able to penetrate the ocean and be picked up by a submarine as deep as 60 feet or 20 meters. One major disadvantage of VLF, though, is that it is very low bandwidth. It can't even transmit real-time audio signals. The most it can do is about 700 words per minute in text. When deeper, some submarines also have the capability to launch buoys to shallower depths to receive signals. Submarines also typically can't respond with VLF frequencies since they don't have large enough transmitters, so they have to raise to shallower depths so they can have antennas sticking out of the water to respond. Oh, it's at this depth that modern submarines will often have quick transmissions with satellites in order to download and upload information. There are a few other techniques used less commonly, some new technologies under development, and some separate systems designed for use when the main systems are compromised, but VLF radio forms the bulk of communications with most submarines. But the fact that submarines spend their time underwater in stealth also makes another crucial element difficult, navigation. Both GPS and radar don't work underwater since they use higher frequency waves that can't make their way through any depth of water. What does work underwater is sonar, where the submarine essentially generates a sound and then listens to when and how the sound comes back to map out its surroundings, but emitting this sound makes it quite easy for others to track a submarine. Therefore, when operating in stealth conditions, submarines can't use active sonar. Rather, they use an inertial navigation system. These are essentially systems of accelerometers and gyroscopes that take the last known accurate GPS position of a submarine and then tracks the submarine's movements relative to that. It uses this to estimate position, but of course, as time goes on from the last reliable reading, the accuracy of this system diminishes. 24 hours after the last reading, these will drift to only about 1.15 miles or 1.85 kilometers of accuracy. Now, this hell? technique combined with the consultation of maps is usually fine since most of the time the ocean is a big, wide open space, but there are a few objects floating below the surface that submarines could collide with. Submarines. Some modern submarines are so well cloaked that another submarine, just feet away, might not be able to detect it. That's what happened on the night of February 3rd, 2009, when the British Navy's HMS Vanguard submarine- This has happened! There's a fucking spot. oh my god. There's a fucking spider on my fucking desk, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god, I hate spiders. <laughs> Get away, you little shit. Oh my god, that's get the fuck out of me. Oh my god. I saw it come down, but I didn't realise it was that big. I was like, wait, what the fuck? That got me a bit weird. <laughs> wait, so <laughs> two submarines crashed? Wait, what? That's what happened on the night of February 3rd, 2009, when the British Navy's HMS Vanguard submarine felt a resounding bump while sailing in the East Atlantic Ocean. Of course, the attack collided with well. the French submarine Le Triomphant seemingly just by chance. Luckily, they were going at low speed and there were no injuries, but considering both these subs were both equipped with nuclear warheads, one can only imagine the potential consequences of a more damaging collision. Submarines are dangerous, even in peacetime. They are designed to disappear, so after something does go wrong, they often do just disappear. Many Jesus. submarine operating countries have rescue submarines that can hypothetically be used to save stranded submariners by going down, latching on, and shuttling sailors to the surface, but in practice, these have never really had much action. Sometimes submarines sink, their systems fail, and nobody can get to them before oxygen runs out. Fuck As no. submarines become better at masking themselves, submarine tracking technology has there ever been any cases of that, like submarines, like in recent times, like within the last sort of 30, 40 years, where a submarine has sort of sunk, ran out of like power, and people have just been stuck there? 
because I can't imagine what that sort of fear would be like. Like knowing that you're helpless, you're stuck at the bottom of the ocean. And you just can't do anything. I can't imagine. Simultaneously advancing. Cannot There's some imagine. thought that there will be a time when nothing can hide in the ocean's depths, but until then, submarines are a crucial aspect of any modern navy. Nowadays, just as they were in World War II, even traditional non-ballistic missile submarines and their torpedoes are effective and deadly. One of the best ways to track submarines is also buy sonar-equipped submarines, so it's a situation where countries need submarines because others have submarines. That's why there are still hundreds of them somewhere, or rather anywhere, ready to strike at any moment. <laughs> So, you know those short, free moments crazy. during your day when waiting for the bus, or the train, or for an appointment, or a is call? It? It's hard to do anything productive yeah, this during is these his times, but Brooms yeah. tackles this. Brilliant. Shout out to him, man. Get your Every day, their short ads daily in. He deserves it. Um, problems give you the context and framework needed to solve a problem, and then once you tackle it on your own. They publish a huge variety of problems, of problems. so once you've figured one out, if Wait. you find it interesting, you can also try their corresponding <laughs> course. Wait, these are what? great ways to help learn a little more in a little time. To start solving Brilliant's daily problems and taking their great courses, go to brilliance.org slash Wendover. Shout the first that 200 man. that go to that link will also- Oh, so you won't get this benefit, but shout out to him and this ad man, he deserves it. Getting his money like he deserves. YouTube needs to make an educational award for content creators for positive, positively educating, not making people dumber. My vote is for Wendover, PS, I love aeroplanes. Yeah, I've got to check out more of his videos, man. I really do enjoy the channel. The chef has nowhere to hide if a meal is bad. <laughs> this made my day. <laughs> Wait, hostile pancakes, I assume he's the chef. Or he's a chef. Imagine being the crew member reading all these first emails. Imagine getting like, sent a risky email by like your your wife and a crew member has to read it first. That's sus, man. I would hate that. Even in a video about submarines, he's able to get planes in. Some say it's because the submarine is small, the chef has nowhere to hide if the meal is bad. Top 10 most dangerous jobs being a submarine chef. <laughs> I love how he named Australian Naval Communication Station Harold D. Holt named after the Prime Minister who went for a swim in the ocean and was ever seen again wait what? wait that's a crazy crazy story what the hell? that's a very unique plane wanna hear a joke what's long wet hard and a seaman in it? <laughs> oh I don't know I could guess a oh it's a submarine fuck's sake <laughs> the comments trolling like usual but I enjoyed this one, I'm not going to lie, I really enjoyed this one. There's a lot more reactions I'm going to do from this channel, I really, really, like, love the, the videos he posts. He probably is my favourite sort of information type um, content creator because, I mean, I like Infographics Show, I like, I, just, I like all the ones that I've reacted to, but this one just seems, not seems, this one is just the most enjoyable one for me, but hope you guys enjoyed this one, definitely more in a way. How, what, what are your thoughts on submarines? Like, I didn't realise they were sort of, like, so, just so, like, sort of complex. And I didn't realise they could shoot sort of above. I thought they could only shoot within the water. But that just shows my lack of knowledge, right? But, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction. More to come. And until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.